All right, now that you've thrown in the images on the uh, index page, on the first page, uh, it would make sense for us to start linking these images to uh, the sub pages or the subordinate pages, but we won't do that yet. We're just going to do a little housekeeping here. This won't take very long. One thing we want to do is we're going to see what this thing looks like so far and what it looks like at least in your default browser. So. Uh, just go ahead and click on Browse. It'll ask you to save it if, it, uh, if you've still been working on it. It hasn't been saved as of the last step. And this is what it's starting to look like. I'll bring it up full screen here and you'll see. But of course I see the lines here. Now remember that we didn't want to have the lines. We created these tables so that we'd have a nice consistent layout, but we don't want the lines there. We don't want people to see it. So it's looking not too bad. Well, what we're going to do then, first thing, whoops, first thing is let's get rid of the lines. I'll do it for one of these and then I'll just skip ahead and um, you can do it for the rest. Pause the video. So go into, I just double clicked here, but go into uh, your table and double click. Now if you double click here it's going to try and change the image and that's not what you want to do. So just double click outside of the image about here somewhere. Go to table and we, uh, I talked about the borders earlier. Well, let's just change the borders to zero pixels. Click OK or Apply. I'm just going to click outside of it. And now you see that we have a red, uh, kind of a red border. But that's just giving us sort of a placeholder for where the actual table is. Now if I browse again, of course I would need to save it again. And now when I browse again, you see that I don't see the... Um, the border. So that's good. Uh, you can do the same thing with the rest. Of course, you know, if you click here for the table, zero. Now let's see if it does it for the whole thing. And it does. So that'll work like that. You can do that for the other three. Now another thing we're going to do while I'm here, you can pause the video if you need to finish the rest. But we can change what, you know, the background color of the whole uh, page if we want. And to do that, I'm kind of going fast here, but to do that, just right click anywhere on the page, go to table or cell background color. Now, I'm just going to pick a color, but watch what happens. It didn't do anything so because I wasn't in the table. So what I want to do is I want to change the background color of the whole page. So to do that, you go up to your format menu, you go to page colors and backgrounds. We'll go to use custom colors. And I'll choose a background color here. Now, you don't make it too bright. Watch, if I go red like this, that'll be a little ridiculous. Okay, that's just too much. And keep in mind that your images that have some white, that aren't transparent GIFs, like you learned about in the GIMP module, of course, you would end up seeing the white background here. So, you know, this is something that you could take into GIMP and change. But anyways without wasting too much time here. I'm just going to go pick a color that uh, is tasteful. Lighter colors are best. Usually light grays are pretty good. People seem to like this. People respond well to light greens, light blues, light grays or half decent web page colors. But you can pick any color you want and this is just to learn how to how to do this. It doesn't mean that it's perfect. Um, other than that, what we'll do though at this point is we'll take our email address that you've created, hopefully you put yours in here, and not mine, and you'll set it up so that if people do have a, an email client installed on their computer like Outlook, uh, not the web-based one, but like the real programs, what this will do is we'll set it up so that we can link it to, directly to their uh, email client. So we'll right click, create a link, that was after selecting it, forget about this pop-up that keeps coming up, and it says what is the link, web page, location, blah blah blah. I'm just going to type in the email address here, and I'm going to click on this check mark that says the above is an email address, and um, click OK. And so what would happen here, I'm just going to save it. And I'm going to browse it just to show you what would happen here. Uh, you'll see my email program is going to open up. But when I click on it, I'm clicking on it from the browser, keep in mind. It's wanting to open up 
my Outlook program. I'll just allow it to show you what it'll do. And it'll try sending me an email directly using the program. So that's all that's about. That won't work with Gmail or Hotmail, um, and nor should it. But that's why I like typing out the address here, just so people don't have to click on it before seeing what the, uh, the address actually is. Uh, and you'll notice that the visit it links turned from blue to this sort of purple-ish color. Uh, we'll end the video with this, and in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to start creating a uh, template for the other pages, and then we'll create the link.